Hey, hey, party people. Welcome to Watch Me Design a Fashion Collection Season 2. I learned a lot making the first series, Watch Me Design a Fashion Collection. I'll drop that playlist in the description box below. But I learned a lot about myself as a designer and video making and how my audience responded to certain things and what they wanted to learn and all these things. So I decided to do a season two. And the collection that I am going to be designing, I kind of already have the idea for it because when I was preparing design briefs for classes like on Patreon and for my book and things like that, I did this word exercise and I loved my example exercise so much that I've been thinking about it ever since. And I want to build my collection on that. So the word exercise I'm talking about is to take a book, do not choose a dictionary because dictionaries are very predictable because they're in alphabetical order. Okay. In any language, they're in alphabetical order. So pick a book with a lot of words that is not a dictionary or a thesaurus and grab a random word, just flip it open and just blindly stab at a word. Okay. And you could do this a few times if you don't really like the word that you get, especially if your words are like the, a, and, you know, and use that as the central theme for your fashion collection. So that was the design brief I presented to my students. And uh, the word that I ended up choosing was preposterous. And you're like, Zoe, I don't know what that word means. That's okay, because the whole point of this exercise is to explore what that word means. So what you're gonna do when you pick your word is to look up the definitions of the word. Most words, a lot of words have more than one definition. Even if one of the definitions is the most dominant one, the one used most uh, by the general people who speak your language. And this is great because this is an exercise you can do with any language. There's no need for it to be any particular language because it's really about the meaning of the word and how you interpret it visually. So yeah, you can do this in your native language. And Go look up all the definitions, okay? When I look up the word preposterous, one of the definitions is extravagant and excessive. Another definition is, this is really hard for me because I really want to write in cursive and I know a lot of you can't read cursive. <laughs> absurd, ridiculous, foolish, ludicrous, farcical, which is different. This is like absurd and this is extra, you know? They're related, but they're different. And a third definition is irrational, contrary to reason or common sense. That can be a third definition. And for me, related to these things, but in my own personal opinion, preposterous is, preposterous is a word to me, a pompous person, a pompous windbag perhaps would use, or they would use it in a pompous way, like mimicking a character, mocking a pompous character, preposterous, you know, as an exclamation or whatever, right? So these, so you can include actual definitions found in a dictionary of your word, or you can choose what the words mean to you personally and have a combination of the above. You know, the purpose of a mind map is a brain dump. It's a brainstorm. So you're just writing down every idea related to the topic that comes up. Even if it's only a little bit related, you know, put it on there because this is not the time for editing. This is the time to take everything out of your head and write it down so that you have a catalog of all the things that you had been thinking about. And later, as you, you know, narrow down your colors and your materials and silhouettes and things, you know, you have a lot of options to work with. But right now we're just idea dumping. So the first thing when I thought of contrary to reason, like, doesn't make any sense. I thought of a raincoat with a hole with a lot of holes in it. And then I thought of really just nonsensical, like, yeah, nonsensical doesn't make sense garments like 
bikinis covered in tiny toys and gadgets that wouldn't help a person sunbathe or swim. Also vests, because vests most of the time are worn under a jacket. So if you covered it in a bunch of stuff, then your jacket wouldn't lay right. And that would just be funny to me. <laughs> People go to great lengths to make sure their suede stays water protected and clean and brushed and beautiful for the rest of their lives. And uh, usually I'm all about taking care of your garments so they last forever. But what if we just ruin the suede? What if we also ruin silk, which is another high value, high quality material that is often, you know, taken, people take great lengths to preserve this, the sanctity of silk tremors and satins. And then here we have the absurd, ridiculous section. And I just started putting things together in my mind. Okay. So I'm th I was thinking in between this space, and so I started, what is absurd and ridiculous, but also extravagant? So I started thinking, metallic brocades are excessive, studded with pearls, but also Monopoly game pieces. When I think of the word extravagant, my mind automatically goes to Marie Antoinette. That's just my brain, okay? I'm sure you have an excessive, extravagant dresser in your mind that is like the person that pops into your mind when you think of the word extravagant. Maybe it's, oh, what is her name? Lulu Guinness? Um, maybe it's Isabella Blow. Am I showing my age? I don't care. Isabella Blow was an amazing dresser, very extravagant. Okay, so pick someone. So Marie Antoinette hair made of balloons. Okay, and it's connecting here as well. But like, can you see that all together? And I'm thinking, when I think excessive, I think of repeating elements, repeating too much, right? So, so something where a person is wearing a blouse, but like most of the face is covered in ruffles and layers of horse hair that are just sticking straight up in the air. Because horse hair will give that structure. So I've had this conversation many times about how to get things to stick up into the air. And you have to go with something with structure like horse hair. And then you really want something that's light so that it stays up in the air. You know, heavier things have a tendency to fall without structure. So if I had like layers of a very stiff organza or a net, a crinoline, which is a stiffer tool, you know, but they're still very lightweight fabrics layered in with horse hair because crinoline, it can be very uh, rough against the skin. So you always want to have like a lining layer, but horse hair is very smooth against the skin. Um, not the cut parts, but the face of horse hair is very smooth. So I had layers of net crinoline and horse hair and maybe the organza, a couple of layers of organza in there and it's covering most of the face. I mean, that's just preposterous. What kind of blouse is that you can't even look to walk? That's preposterous. See what I did there? <laughs> okay, anyway, and what if, what if they wore a ball gown that was so big that it needed to be carried? Because again, like the Marie Antoinette uh, reference. Like I wouldn't do something that actually had like the whole um, panniers. It would look a little too literal. But what if the ball gown was so big that a person could not wear it by themselves? That's preposterous. That's like almost like pallbearers. That got a little morbid, but... I try to keep things light and fun on the channel because I know I have a very mixed age audience, but you know, my designs can get a little bit dark and macabre, like, you know, when I'm working alone and not in the prying eye of thousands of people. So I'm thinking it here and I'm thinking it here, like it's excessive and it's definitely something a pompous windbag would wear. And I keep thinking, okay, so I don't mean to gender the term windbag because definitely windbag has no genitalia attached to it. But I think a lot of the time we just think of like bald old men yelling at staff when we think of pompous windbag. Okay? And so I keep thinking of like 
Old dudes back in the day when men's wear was as ornate, if not more ornate than women's wear. And I kept building those references. I definitely don't want it to look period. I do not want it to look like historical costume. Um, I am definitely a fashion designer and not a costume designer. No diss on costume designers, but I'm trying to keep things modern. But I'm also thinking of like a massive floor length swing coat with balloon sleeves and a Vato back where it's like almost a, a cape, almost a caftan, but actually a coat, opera coat, something like that. Something like Andre T- Leon Talley would wear. Now, listen, I'm not calling him a pompous windbag. I don't know enough about him to say either which way, okay? But he definitely had like a pomp and circumstance sort of style. Um, he had like the big capes, the big coats, the stacks of Louis Vuitton suitcases, the bold colors. Like he had a very pompous style. Okay. I don't know anything about his personality. Okay. But he had that kind of style. And so I'm thinking of that as well, but also eat the rich man. So spray painted with graffiti. So I'm just definitely feeling the balloons, balloon sleeves, balloon hair, And I'm thinking balloons are a ridiculous thing. I don't want it to look too circus themed. Again, keeping things modern is going to be, it's going to be the balance because all the ideas that I've put down, it could be very easy for me to go off the deep end and just go, but we're not going to do that. I still want to keep it modern and fun and ridiculous, but modern. You could still like, I mean, the styling would be irrational, okay? But if you strip down pieces, how it could be fun to incorporate into wardrobes. So that's going to be, I think, the sort of thing going on here where I'm trying to balance the preposterous ridiculousness and making it still modern clothes. All right, so that's what I'm working on. And when I am, when this video airs, I will be in the middle of Europe running around with my sketchbook, helping my friend pick out a grad school and uh, visiting my family and all those good things. And hopefully I can come up with some good ideas to bridge the ridiculous and the modern in some artful ways, thinking about what is a preposterous color story? What, tell me in the comments what you think is a preposterous color story. Is it all the colors? Is it all neon colors? Just like a lack of neutrals altogether? Colors that don't go together? Okay. What do you think is a preposterous color story? So I am taking my watercolors on this trip. So yeah. I will be playing around with some color uh, color stories and all these themes that I've explored on just this mind map and hopefully expand upon each of these sections. I mean, for me, I'm just going to go ahead and number them. One, two, three, and four. So I myself can keep track of the four themes I have going on. I mean, they're already starting to kind of merge together. Like this can be a thing that comes together. As per the last season, if you want to play along with me, if you want to design along with me, please do design along. Pick up a book, find a word that resonates with you. Go look up the definitions, explore those meanings in various ways and explore how you can visually develop these themes and words. And I will see you in the next video.